Hi folks, Casual Dad here again. I'm gonna go ahead and do a much shorter video this time. We're just gonna do a warlord, uh, a warlord guide. I'm gonna talk about Inquisitor Greyfax, who's come up quite a bit here, uh, and I'll both talk about playing as Greyfax, what Greyfax does, and then talk about some counters and how to beat her too. So Inquisitor Greyfax is an Imperium warlord. She's in the faction Servants of the Emperor, as seen at the top here. So all of her bodyguards are gonna be pulled from the Servants of the Emperor cards. These are her stats in progression. She starts off with Inspire. She's legendary, so she starts off at level one with her trait. And then her secondary trait that was just added is gonna be Big Game Hunter. So uh, first, she will give a flat buff to all attack stats of every card that's in play with her, including herself. And that amount will depend on what level your trait is. At level three, it's 25%. And then Big Game Hunter means that she will do bonus damage to cards whose cost is over 40 points and that damage also will uh, increase based on the, the level of the trait. And then her just flat ability that she applies to the entire game is Inquisitorial Retinue, and this is where a lot of the problems come in. <laughs> uh, for every five unused deck points, each friendly Servants of the Emperor card receives a 3% buff to all stats when it's deployed, up to a maximum of 75%. Now I did the math the other day, and if I remember that correctly, that means that whenever you make a deck, uh, you have your 199 tech po or deck points if you're at top level. Uh, if you leave 125 of those unspent, that will give a flat 75% buff to all attack stats and health of every card in your deck, including Greyfax herself, which is very scary. Um, and so you can play a deck like that and it's perfectly competitive. So I'm actually gonna show that here. I'm gonna play a quick unranked game and then I'm gonna play a ranked game just to show you what that is. So with this, my entire deck, every single card is under 15 points aside from Greyfax herself. I've got 125 points up here left unspent, which is the maximum possible bonus. So this is a reasonably competitive deck played with cards you would start with in the beginning and can run even if you only have a tiny amount of deck points. And that's both the beauty and downside of Greyfax. The beauty being that you can use low powered cards and expect them to be significantly more powerful and actually compete with more powerful cards. But at the same time, you're leaving a lot of points on the table, so you have to use stats and cards where the bonus is worth the cost. So where you do enough more that it's worth kind of taking the penalty of having weaker cards. So right here you can see right off the bat, let's go right back. So kind of looking at these stats, I mean, this is a seven point card. He's dropping with almost 200 health and hits significantly harder, but that's a 70%, 75% boost to his base stats, uh, and that's what he comes out with, as opposed to her, which is 76. At a six point card, throwing out 76 range damage per shot is very impressive. And so that's uh, where she comes in. I do fully expect to win this. It's unranked, um, and that is kind of another downside to Greyfax, and one of the reasons she comes up so much is because the matchmaking system will tend to match you up in part based on card count and total points spent on your deck because newer players are not able to fill all the card slots and start with lower deck points. So most of the time when you are running a Greyfax deck you're actually getting favorable matches because uh, the game is sort of assuming that you're not as powerful as you are because you could be a top level player, you could be at max level cards that are extremely powerful and you're still getting favorable matchups. The flip side to that is that means that if you are a newer player and you're kind of doing your quick matches and looking for matchups, you're going to be matched against Greyfax a much higher proportion of the time. That's a game design thing that I do hope that the designers do kind of tackle at some point. I assume they will. They've been really good at kind of addressing things like that for the most part. Um, but for the moment, there's a bit of a slog you have to go through if you want to get through the early levels and get past that kind of Greyfax wall. So that's kind of the downside here. Uh, and the upside again is that as Greyfax you get those favorable matches, so if you're climbing the competitive ladder, you'll have an edge. Uh, not a huge edge, you'll still end up fighting some of those more powerful decks, but you will find that some of your matches you're pretty overpowered. And even here, I'm doing just a lot of damage, and again, the total cost of cards I have on the board is what? Uh, we got 4, we got 11, uh, so 23 points of cards on the table, and they're holding up to a Lehman Russ. Not max level, it's not a high level Lehman Rust, but look at this thing. This thing should be wiping the, the table with me. But, beauty of Greyfax. 
Now, a couple things I want to talk about here that I'm going to talk about more in the actual ladder competitive game I'm about to play too. Uh, so we've talked about the relative strengths and what Grayfax does. To talk about some of the weaknesses, um, really quickly, when people say, how do I counter Grayfax? The quick answer is you don't. Now, that doesn't mean you can't beat Grayfax. It just means there is no hard counter to Grayfax for a couple reasons. For one, her ability is a flat buff to whatever cards you put in her deck. So they don't have to be ranged, don't have to be psychic, don't have to be melee. They can be any mix of those, of any attacks that's that you want to use. So there is no way to tech against Grayfax because Grayfax could be anything. So that's mostly what people mean when they say that. And then her just base, when she's sitting at that max bonus, she's just crazy. And this is only level, only, quote unquote, level 7. Nowhere near max, but she's doing basically 100 damage in every attack stat, 300 health. Big Game Hunter usually has a bonus, uh, ranged as her most powerful stat. So she's quite scary. But getting back to that, there is no necessary theme to a Grayfax deck. You could have a deck where every single card is relatively balanced. Um, and that's kind of the downside that makes her challenging to fight against, because you can never really predict what she's going to run. Uh, and so I'm in Terra. I'm going to go ahead and run my fairly competitive Grayfax deck. Uh, and this is a somewhat bad example, because for me, I really like using these Psychers. They have fallen short for me, especially when I started out when they were at lower level uh, with other Warlords, and Grayfax gives them the extra buff to where they are extremely powerful. That said, this is by no means an auto win. Grayfax is a very powerful Warlord, but she's, I think, third, uh, if that, of my top competitive Warlords, and by a significant margin. So she's not one of the ones I expect to get to the peak of my uh, achievements in every season. So you saw my deck, this one is my competitive one, it's considerably... <laughs> it uses quite a few more points than my first one. So my bonus is not that max 75%, I've kind of shuffled around 40%. And somewhere between 40 to 50% is about what you can expect to, to see when you face a Grayfax deck. And I've got the Ablative card. That was actually a perfect example of one of the weaknesses of Grayfax, is if you're not spending all your deck points, there's a very, very good chance that you are not running a full deck. So number one way to counter Grayfax is you can outnumber her. You can out um, overwhelm her decks because she's not going to have the same volume of cards that you do. So you'll have more bodyguards, especially if you're dropping in some endless cards, if you have some shielded cards that can tank some of these hits. Um, that's a really good advantage. And so something like the Turvagon, who's one of my favorite Warlords, matches up well against Greyfax, because you can just keep feeding these beefy cards, um, just chaff cards, while you kind of work through them slowly. So definitely not unbeatable, especially here. I'm looking at a... Uh, oh jeez, what's his name? Zephyr Blade deck, where even as his cards are dying, the cards that I'm facing are getting more and more powerful. And because of that ability, you're very likely to face a max, a uh, full deck. Uh, going up against the Zephyr Blade. So even as I'm getting kills, I'm pumping up his powerful cards, and the cards coming up against me are more and more powerful. So I'm expecting to start taking some pretty significant losses here, and Greyfax herself will come out. I probably will still win this. Uh, if you look at the relative trophy ratings, I am favored to win this, um, because they put me up against a player who doesn't have the same level of trophies that I do. And I'm not saying this isn't a scary deck. This is a very scary deck but it's not as terrifying or completely unstoppable as it can appear on paper. And now some top tier players are gonna be running much scarier Grayfax decks than I am right here. Totally get it. Uh, that is definitely something to be concerned about. Ooh, good drop. Uh, but that's not as scary as it could be by any means. So he will not wipe my board and so I'll have a full health Grayfax on here, giving him a lot of trouble. Ooh, but close, look at that. But, so those are some key points I wanted to bring up about Grayfax. I am again going to win this deck. I probably should. This guy I'm up against is lower level, lower trophy count. Um, these cards are nowhere near as scary as they could be later on. So I'm going to play one more game to see if I get a tougher match, just so you can kind of see that a little bit better. And I waited to do this video until I hit Terra in this season to hope for tougher matchups. So you can kind of get a sense of seeing, to see... Uh, sort of where she stacks up. See, even here, Zephyr Blade, I can't kill him in one hit because mine, Grayfax, is nowhere near as frightening as that max bonus one. Not to say she's not scary. Those are still excellent stats and a lot of health. Uh, and I don't have to kill this guy in one hit because I have every advantage right now. 
But say, for example, that was a bad rec deck. Even Greyfax really struggles to chew through the hit points of those cards while taking that damage back. Uh, and because of the kind of infinite chain attacks they can do, uh, bad rec is one that really can give Greyfax some trouble. So again, I'm going to play another game. We'll see what I get. We'll see how it goes. That's the wrong button. There we go. Same deck, of course. You see other variants of this, and the full psyker Greyfax is one you'll see fairly often. But it's a good thing to note that it usually gets beat up by Akraham because he's got Tigurius. And Tigurius has the damage output to, to counter my psychers and uh, has the die twice because of Captain Akaran. Um, and then you get Nyal in there bouncing it out, and it's usually a bigger deck that takes that's harder to get through. So that is exactly the kind of thing that really gives Greyfax trouble. Is a full deck that's especially durable that can really hold you down. And this too, uh, again, I'm higher rated, especially after that last fight, so I should win this, but mostly by virtue of his cards being lower level. If those were max level, like if this guy was anywhere close to his max level, I would be in real trouble here, and I still probably am in trouble. Uh, I have the edge where I'm doing all psychic attacks, and he doesn't have any psychers, so that's nice. I do have the hit points and damage to counter in melee, so I should be able to take this down, uh, especially because of that big game hunter on Greyfax. That may make the difference in this game. And this will be the first time that's come up for me so far this season, since they added it. Hopefully that's helpful to kind of help you learn how to run Greyfax if you really want to, and also understand how to beat her if you're sort of stuck in that Greyfax wall. I totally get it. Uh, I definitely hit some Warlord walls early on when I started out, and Greyfax in particular can appear just very intimidating. But I hope this has clarified that she's not unbeatable, uh, and does have some kind of measurable weaknesses that you can exploit. And also seeing how a deck is played by a human player can kind of show you where it has some room to counter. Let's see. So I want to take him down, but I don't really want to put something that's scary in front of him, so we'll, eh, I really want to take that down. Okay. And this is one I'm being a little bit edgy, just because you never know when this deck can turn. Mazrog can really hit you hard, and I haven't checked what level his Mazrog is. Chances are it's not high level. Yeah. He's an epic warlord and takes an extremely long time to level, so you it's very rare to see a, a level 3 even uh, berserk on Mazrog, even when you see him. He's still very, very powerful, but he could be a whole lot worse. But he can just take so many hits that this is still going to be somewhat close, I think. And again, I'm saved here by being matched up against a player who's sort of... Uh, I don't want to say just outmatched, but he's lower level. He's not... This isn't an even fight. This isn't a fight that we should be having. Um, it's early enough in the latter season that I'm probably seeing the higher rated decks, just as it does try to randomize, does try to rotate warlords, so you don't see the same warlords back to back. Um, and it being this early, there are not that many players who are actually in Terra yet. So that makes it a really good time to ladder if you want to be particularly aggressive, because you'll get matches like this one where you are favored. That said, it's also a bad time, because if you're only fighting decks that are higher rated than yours, then you'll only progress... Whew, God, you'll only progress by um, 45 points per match. So 45. So it's a very slow way to advance, but it's a safe way to advance because you're playing early, and it kind of helps you get to Terra early and helps you kind of rank higher. Uh, we've got a little time. If you're going to stick with me, I'm going to do one more just to see. Honestly, I kind of want to lose, or at least see a deck that's that's higher rated than me to see an actual, like, I shouldn't say actual challenge. Ooh, that's better. Okay. Um, and here's an example, too. Now, I mentioned that Greyfax doesn't have a theme, so the deck can do whatever you want. I happen to have all psychers, but there's no reason I have to do that. That's just the way that I've built it, because I really like these psychic cards and want them to perform well, and this is what I've done to do that. Uh, but Tolmeron is an opposite example where he has a very, very strong theme where he beefs up ranged cards. And so if a Tolmeron deck goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Greyfax deck, the Tolmeron deck is going to outshoot Greyfax. And that's a really important point because that is how... That's one of the ways you can counter Greyfax. If you have a fine-tuned deck that has a theme like that, it can beat her up really good. And even in this case, if I went up against, again, an Akaran deck with a bunch of Psychers, that would be a challenge. And if I went up against a um, 
Voldus deck with a bunch of Grey Knights, they could outpsych me. And they could shoot me, they could hit me with every single attack type, and they would then um, compete with me on those psychic attacks. And if I, was, if I start taking psychic attack damage back, especially uh, versus a deck that's got more cards than mine, then that very quickly can snowball and I could lose. Even this, I probably still have got it, but this was a closer match than could have come up before. Uh, this is another case where this guy's not high level, though. Ooh, there's another flyer in there. There we go. So again, I will probably get this one, but uh, I did want to highlight one of the ways that Greyfax can lose again. So a fine-tuned themed deck that has a very powerful specific attack type, again, like ranged or heavy melee, can beat Greyfax fairly comfortably because her themes, while powerful, are not a consistent theme. It's just whatever stats you've got in your deck. Hopefully I didn't embarrass anyone <laughs> watching the stream by playing against one of their their decks, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you're still with me, these have been really fast games. I think I'm going to do, do one more, and then I promise I will stop after that, and I appreciate you sticking with me if you've made it this far. Okay, there's that bad ruck. We'll see how high-rated his cards are. Well, that's not a good start. Badrick himself. Okay, he's level 6. That's uh, respectable. And this guy is going to take a while to move. So I want to debuff him. Yeah, okay, let's see how this goes. And so this also, I'm going to do another thing on Badrick as well, because he's another wall you can hit. So I'll talk about the top tier ladder decks at some point, but I wanted to go ahead and highlight Greyfax first, because she gets talked about a lot, especially recently. But then also, I want to make sure to cover Badrock because he can be one of the most frustrating decks you can face. And um, especially as a newer player kind of getting started, there's a wall mid to late in the season around 2k where any deck you have that's in that 2k ranked range, you're just going to keep hitting Badrocks. Uh, not constantly, they did fix that, the matchmaking ladder a little bit, so it tries to match you against Warlords you haven't seen within a set rotation. So it's not just Badrock, 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 which it used to be when I did it. <laughs> uh, but still, he appears very frequently to the point where, ah, there's a bonus attack. So once those bonus attacks start chaining, then you really kind of have trouble. Uh, and this is why I have these area effect cards here to take down those shields, to strip shields off cards like this one. But yeah, so Badrock, major advantages, uh, has a bunch of fast cards, so pretty much always will attack first has a bunch of extremely durable cards, so you have to work really hard to remove them. And then also has the ability that lets him chain ranged attacks. So getting rid of those is great. But then he's going to drop Badrick himself. Luckily, my Inquisitor was up against uh, Smirket, <laughs> the Gretchen. So he didn't really take a buff too much. But it's probably the plane, probably a decent level. Yeah, that one. Scar Daka, whatever it is. Now, when this guy's max level or high level, when he lands, he can throw out 130 odd damage on the drop, trigger the follow up shots that are hitting for some absurd level of damage, um, and he's going to activate now because of Badrick's ability, and we'll see if that's enough to kill. It is, okay, and that'll do the chain, and that'll be a board wipe. So, this actually is exactly what I was looking for as a game that's slightly more challenging and does show off some of the ways you can beat Greyfax. Unfortunately, it is a bad ruck, but that is one of the cards that, or the one of the warlords that can definitely give Greyfax a run for it. I'm pretty sure I still have this because this is not by any means a max level bad ruck deck, and having that smirk it in there instead of a punchier card definitely was good for me. Uh, but it is going to be closer than either of the other two, not only because I have Greyfax on the field, but also because I've got her on the field against a full health enemy, and bad ruck himself has pretty significant HP. So it's going to take probably two or three turns to chew through them. But we'll see. See if I can do better than that. Challenge here is to remove Badruck without losing either of my bodyguards. But let's see what we do. So he's going to do ranged. And I'm going to do ranged right back, buddy. Bring it on. And I got him. Okay. But this again is because these are not that high level. That Skardak is pretty up there. But having just that 99 damage 
just that 99 damage. That's how scary that thing is. Um, yeah, it makes it a little easier. I'll try to do some other streams later where I do some more Grayfax leveling to see how high I get. If I hit kind of that 3k range, I'll hit some really scary stuff, and then you can see how it goes. <laughs> but again, because of the time in the latter season, because of the... the it's still early in the ladder, like I was saying earlier, so I'm not hitting the really powerful decks yet. A lot of the stuff I'm fighting is just kind of middling stuff that's hit Terra, but there's not much in it yet. Um, at this point, if you look at the actual Terra rating, this is always fun. Uh, yeah, so I'm position 91 in Terra with just 9,100 trophies. So it's really, really early. There's only... There are only 100 players in Terra at all. Or 120 players in Terra at all. Uh, that's usually several thousand, where you start seeing much scarier decks up there. So, But yeah, hope you appreciated this. Hopefully this was helpful for someone to get past that uh, Grayfax wall, or at least kind of feel better about it, about where it is and what's going on, uh, and know that you will get past that. <laughs> so yeah, good luck. Uh, ooh, one last thing. Uh, if you're still with me, of course, then here's your bonus. The most powerful Grayfax decks that I've run into that beat me up at higher tiers when I'm playing other decks usually have Grayfax herself... And then just all of these guys. So the, uh, oh, what is it? Gaunts. Is it the last chancers? No. But these guys here, like these guys at 15 points a pop, you can put all of them into a deck uh, about the same size as this one. I think you get all five and then can play around with it a little bit. It's a really good mix of abilities. They all have strong melee and ranged attacks. Uh, it's a very flexible deck. And with Grayfax's bonus, that can really beat things up. I've had trouble shifting those decks quite a bit. If they're high level, they can really throw you around. You've got your barrage. You've got your fear. Uh, yeah, they are. That is good. So the scariest things I've seen are actually mixes of ranged and melee, which again, no theme, but they're just very powerful cards. So if you have a lean, mean theme deck, it can usually beat them down, but that is what to watch out for. If you have kind of a mid-rangey deck that tries to do a little bit of everything, that's where Grayfax is really going to beat you up. Uh, so yeah, that's my bonus. Hope this has been helpful. Appreciate it. And until next time.